Hi and welcome to today's science video. In today's video I hope to show you a reaction that's pretty pretty simple and straightforward to conduct but at the same time uh, given the slightly unique method that I'm going to be choosing I hope you agree that uh, it gives you fantastic results. It's actually a class of reactions called reduction. Uh, reduction always takes place in uh, hand in hand with another type of reaction called oxidation. So we're going to be reducing uh, this actual compound which is called copper 2 oxide uh, it's actually a black powder I'm going to open it up for you and uh, and show you tight lid I'll just show you what's uh, what's on the inside as you see it is a black powder okay and uh, surprisingly enough uh, we're going to be reacting it with another black powder we're actually using charcoal wood powder which is a form of carbon very refined powder, so we have to be very careful with this, otherwise we get a little bit coffee. It's uh, it's quite irritating if we breathe it in, so we're just very careful with that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be placing them together in a boiling tube. I'm going to show you how you can keep everything in because, my experience, I find that you know, quite a few quite a bit of it escapes when you're he heating it. And uh, then we're going to have a look at the product. So. Let's take a look at how you set everything up for your class. So the first thing that you're going to have to do is mix your powders to make sure that there is an even reaction happening all the way through. So I've got a piece of paper over here, I folded it uh, in half and I folded it in half again. There we go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put around about a spoonful of each of the powders uh, into the middle and give it a good mix. Now you've got to be careful otherwise you will spill it on your table. So here we are, we're going to try that again, and we're going to have a nice spoonful of the carbon. So here we go, just going to put that in the middle. Okay, I've got a rather large boiling tube, so I'm going to use two this time. Next in goes the copper to oxide. So as you can see, it is another black powder. So I'm just going to zoom in on this just to show you. It's just a little subtle uh, difference in uh, the shades, but it's pretty black. Having done this several times and seen uh, that the, the possibility of this actually building up pressure on the inside of the boiling tube and shooting out, what I would recommend is that you use a long sheet of uh, mineral wool, roll it around uh, so it looks like a, a Swiss roll. Roll it around a uh, glass rod and then poke it on the inside there. Now if you give it uh, a, little, uh, a, a little more length uh, towards the top, you'll then be able to gently fold it. And if there was uh, a, a, a whoosh of air, then uh, the, the pressure would actually be reduced because the air could actually escape. What you don't want to do is you don't want to stuff it all the way in there because it will just create a plug and the pressure will build. Got, got to remember as well is that you are actually forming carbon dioxide in there so there is going to be a pressure build up if it's completely sealed then the entire uh, boiling tube is going to uh, explode so you have to be very very careful about this um, if in doubt I would definitely recommend that you have a safety screen set up for your students if they are watching at a distance so here we are with the safety screen beautiful brand new safety screen that we've got this year and we're ready to set everything up so have your audience on this side so here we go, and here's another uh, adaptation that you can do. Instead of using a pair of test tube holders, uh, which will work with a boiling tube, sometimes I find that you don't actually get that much of a grip, uh, particularly if you want to try and shake it around. So if you do want to uh, shake it, first of all, rest the, uh, the bottom of the uh, boiling tube on the, on the mat, so it'll give you a, a, a little bit of um, a surface to, uh, to, to move the um, boiling tube and uh, just use uh, uh, the, the, the end of a clamp. Uh, just make sure that the end of the clamp actually has a uh, cork, not um, rubber. And uh, just, it just it, it's quite, you obviously don't have the rest of the clamp connected to it. Uh, you can actually see over here that I folded the, um, the mineral wool and there is a little bit of a, a, a gap on the inside to, to relieve the pressure. And we're gonna heat this now. So here we are, we're just now starting to uh, heat this and hopefully uh, it won't escape out of the, uh, the top. 
everything will be contained. But just to be on the safe side, if, you, uh, if you're heating this, uh, keep the top of the boiling tube uh, facing uh, towards the wall. Uh, preferably maybe a, 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 okay. a, a post and not necessarily a window otherwise it's going to be quite a bit of a mess that you have to uh, tidy up. You could even put a could even put a board there as well. So what you will want to do is you will want to have a tessie rack handy just in case you need to uh, answer any questions or uh, something something requires your attention. You just be able to put it in there. The problem is that it's actually going to be very, very hot. So uh, to minimize that, I would suggest that you put um, uh, a heat proof mat underneath. So all you need to do is just put your heat proof mat in like this. And then the bottom of your boiling tube will be able to go uh, directly uh, into and onto that surface so you're not burning anything. Shouldn't be, shouldn't be uh, uh, too much of a problem anyway. So. so here we are, strong heating. Now you can actually, you can actually have this uh, clamped or I prefer to have a little bit of control, especially if there is a, you, you can actually see a, 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 a pocket of gas forming there. You've got to keep an eye out for these. Uh, the pockets of gas you actually fall. There's, a, there's one, for example. And it only falls because you've got the carbon reacting with the oxygen in the air. So you can just simple that just by giving it a quick tap. get this moisture happening, uh, uh, condensing at the top. Don't worry about that. That is just uh, maybe absorbed within the, uh, the charcoal while, the, uh, uh, while it's being stored. And just continue heating. When you try this out, it might be worth uh, testing it out to see if you get different results, uh, heat it from the top to the bottom, bottom to the top. Perhaps if you heat it from the top to the bottom, uh, so from, the, from the top over here to the bottom, you might actually reduce uh, the amount of uh, uh, pressure build up. I'm just gonna shake it around just a little bit. You can see that the, the powder is there. And kind of like, if you look at it, you'll actually see it dancing around. Just give it a gentle tap just to bring any uh, any powder at the bottom and then repeat. Now once it starts going it's actually going to be really really rapid so you just have to be uh, well aware of this. It will start to go very slowly and then suddenly it will start to uh, it will start to uh, glow. You have to be careful because it can actually um, uh, it can actually run away. So you will start to see uh, colour changes taking place. I mean, this is this is now almost uh, almost horizontal. Try and spread the surface out so that you're not. Uh, you're not keeping uh, a, a large layer of the uh, reactor mixture on uh, top of a, a bed of gas that's about to uh, uh, push upwards and outwards. It's usually that gas pushing upwards on a on a on a layer that then pushes out this uh, this part at the top. So keeping it horizontal is is uh, is, is wise. take it away it will be self-sustaining and just put it back in there. 
So at the bottom over here, you've got something that's distinctively different to the blackness of the copper tooth oxide and the charcoal carbon powder that we started off with. This is copper metal. Now, how did that form? Well, what's happened is that the carbon has reacted with the copper tooth oxide. Not only has the carbon combined with the oxygen from the copper to oxide, but it has also provided uh, subatomic particles called electrons to the copper two plus ions, and that has then allowed the copper to turn into copper metal atoms, which are neutral in electrical charge. It has the same number of protons as electrons. So this is a, this is a reduction reaction. Uh, but you've also uh, got to take into account the fact that carbon is gaining oxygen and so the carbon is actually being oxidized. So we have a combination of reduction and oxidation. We have what we call a redox reaction. Okay, now once you're confident with having made a product, you can now transfer this over to your plastic beaker. Uh, you can remove the uh, mineral wool so long as nothing is actually coming out, but it's perfectly okay to immerse the uh, the boiling tube into the uh, Into the water Okay, so the reaction is uh, so I've stopped heating and what I'm going to do is I'm now going to plunge this into the water So just stand back And let's see Now it will smash and uh, we'll be able to get some of, the, uh, some of the new product. Now with a little care what you'll be able to do is you'll be able to prise some of the, uh, some of the solid that's been produced away from the, uh, the test tube and what you can then do is you can uh, transfer this over to a microscopic slide and that's what we're going to do uh, right now. Now dig deep and you'll be able to find some really nice samples of your uh, product which is copper. So here we go and that's what you want to try and show under the microscope but if you're lucky you can actually just show that to your audience uh, to convince them that you have indeed uh, made a new product. This one is absolutely beautiful. I'm not joking, this is actually a really lovely sample of uh, copper and you'll be able to look at that under a microscope. So what I've been able to do is uh, set up a microscope. I've set it up on a webcam that I've arranged uh, before and I now have my uh, microscopic slide containing my copper. Now there's various ways in which you can actually do this. Uh, a popular uh, a popular method that I choose uh, to take quite often is that I use uh, a phone uh, light to allow it to reflect uh, off the copper surface. I'm not going to be able to do that unfortunately right now because I'm filming at the same time. Uh, so I'm just going to have to rely on the light, the natural light of the lab and also the light of the microscope. Now if you can't see anything, if it goes black, then all you'll need to do is just turn this light off. And let's see what we've got on the display.